Let's understand certain more other things about a determinant. Right? If each element of a row or column of a determinant is multiplied by any constant k, then the value of the determinant is also multiplied by k. Now let's take a determinant a which is equal to 1, 2, 3, 3, 2, 1, 1, 3, Now what does this property say? So you have R1, R2, R3, you have C1, C2 and C3, right? What this property says is that let's say you multiply R1 by 5, right? So by when you multiply R1 by 5, what you will get is that there will be a new made determinant, let's say a1, which will have 5 into 1 is equal to 5, 5 into 3 is equal to 15, and 5 into 1 equals to 5. So we've multiplied r1 by 5. And let's say the other elements remain the same. This property says that if determinant of a is equal to x then determinant of a1 is equal to 5x why because the value of the determinant of a matrix is multiplied by the number by which this row is multiplied so let's say if you multiplied r2 by 4 then it would have been 5x into 4 if you multiply c1 by another 3, then the value will be 5x into 4 into 3. So this will be 60x. Right? So let's say you have a1 and let's another take. Okay, a2 I'll take maybe a little, a little later stage. Because then there might be confusion. So let's first find out the value of a. So debt a is equal to 1. Right? Minus 3. Plus 1. One into. So the value of determinant of A is equal to 12, right? I haven't done the detailed speaking out because I think this is now fairly standard. Let's calculate value of determinant of A1. So you have 5 into 2 into 2, 4 minus 3 into 1, 3, right? Minus 15, this one. So ignore this column, ignore this row, 2, 3, 3, 2, right, 2, 3, 3, 2, 2 into 2 gives you 4, minus, plus 5, which is this, into 2, 1s are 2, minus 6, right, so you get 5 into 1, minus 15, minus 15, sorry, plus minus 15 into 4 minus 9 gives you minus 5 plus 5 into 2 minus 6 gives you minus 4. So you get 5 in plus minus 15 into minus 5, 75 plus actually minus 5 into minus 4, so you get minus minus 20 which is equal to 60. Now if you see then determinant of a1 is equal to 60 
is equal to 5 into 12. And what is 12? 12 is basically nothing but value of determinant A. So 5 times determinant A. So what do we saw? We saw that as we multiplied the first row by 5, the value of determinant, which was 12 originally, changed to 60, which is 5 times the value of the first determinant. Right? I leave a question with you guys, right? Wherein I put in A2 is equal to, let's say we multiply C1 by 5. So what do we get? We will get the new matrix as 5 into 1 is equal to 5, 5 into 2 is equal to 10, and 5 into 3 is equal to 15. 3 2, 1, 1, 3, 2. Now you know that the value of A is 12, so you should find out the value of determinant of A2 and that should be equal to 60. Because here also we kind of multiplied column 1 by 5. So ideally the value should be 60. Do you guys want me to do it for you? Okay, let's try it out. So we have 5 out here. We've got minus 3 out here and we've got 1 out here. We are using again row 1 for expansion. So when you use 5, you have 2, 1, 3, 2 over here. When you use this column, this goes off, this goes off. So you have 10, 15, 3 and 2 over here. And as you use plus 1, which is this, you have 1, 2, 3, 4 things over here. 10, 15, 2 and 1 or 5 into 2 into 2, 4 minus 3, minus 3. 10 into 2 is 20, minus 15 into 3 is 45, plus 1. 10 into 1 is 10, minus 15 into 2 is 30, right? So 5 into 1, which is 5, minus 3 into 20 minus 45 is minus 25, so minus 3 into minus 25 gives you plus 75, plus 1 into minus 20, which is minus 20. Again, 80 minus 20 is equal to 60, which is what is the value supposed to be, which is nothing but 5 times the value of determinant.